Hey guys, and welcome to Petrol Ped. So winter is upon us. Surely the perfect time to buy an SUV like that Defender or even the lovely Range Rover behind me. Or is it the perfect time of year to buy a convertible? So I've popped in to my good friends at Anthony James Cars because I haven't been here for quite a while and I was talking to Daniel on the phone recently, he said look we've got some great cars in stock, pop over, have a cup of coffee and have a look round. Well, my eye is instantly drawn to this absolutely stunning red Audi Quattro next to me. I mean, if you want to be Gene Hunt and fire up the Quattro, this is the car for you. It's in immaculate condition. But actually, today's video isn't about this car, although I am quite tempted to take it up the road for a spin. Actually, I want to talk about this because I nearly filmed with this car two, nearly three years ago now. This is a V6 F-Type convertible. Nothing special, I hear you cry. However, there's something very special about this car. But it got me thinking, I love my convertibles. And the simple question I wanna to ask today is, is now the middle of winter when it's terrible weather outside, it's blowing a gale, it's raining, and there's a storm on its way. Surely it's the worst time of the year to buy a convertible. Or is it? Is now the perfect time? So there are quite a few lovely convertibles here today. So I thought I'd quickly walk around, have a look at some different price ranges. Some of them are cars that I would lust after in a big way. And then we'll come back to this one and we'll take it up the road and explain why this car is so very, very special. But if this, this is a V6 F-Type, just over there is its big brother, the V8 F-Type convertible. A beast of a car. Yes, the F-Type V8 R, five litre supercharged V8, 500 odd horsepower, incredible things and I love the spec of this car. I remember back in the early days of Petroped, the first, if you like, performance car I got on the channel was a V6 F-Type Coupe. The day I filmed that, when I got back to the dealership, I was taken up the road in one of these in a convertible V8 R and it was just the most incredible thing. This is a 2017 car, so pre-OPF. They sound amazing. And this is 62,995. So I would be very tempted, although I have to say for me driving every day, I'd probably want the all wheel drive version because if it's damp and you don't know what you're doing, these things, you could get into a lot of trouble. Car next to it, by the way, I've nearly filmed with that twice because that's a good friend of mine, David Bush. The guys here at Anthony James are selling that car for him. It's just gone under offer. So sadly, I've missed my opportunity with that beautiful Huracan Puffamante. But talking about Lamborghinis, let's head this way. This place really is an Aladdin's cave of loveliness. I mean, the spec of this is pretty special. 911, 991.1 GTS cab. That could be the perfect car, actually. It's a two plus two, two seats in the back for the pups. I've had a bit of time in a 911 convertible, incredible cars, but this is the car though, look at it. A Gallardo Performante, however, I have a couple of major problems with this car and it's got nothing to do with the spec or the colour or the noise it makes. I mean it's a sensational car. My problem with it is size. <laughs> Unfortunately my leg length and a Lamborghini Gallardo Spider or Huracan Spider or Audi R8 Spider for that matter they just don't go hand in hand. I can just about fit in the car, but it wouldn't be comfortable for anything other than just maneuvering it around in the garage. But an absolutely stunning, stunning thing. This, we're upping the budget now, 110,995, and it could be yours. Although, don't hang around, because there's plenty of interest in this car. But look at it, stunning. Now then, this is a tale of Porsche loveliness, one I could probably afford, one I can't. <laughs> the one I can afford is this 2017 718 Boxster S, 51995. Really lovely spec, it's got the turbo wheels, and actually, from a Porsche perspective, a Boxster would be right up my street. The car I really want, and the car I can't afford, 
is this. Now, hopefully you've watched my recent NC500 adventures in the Cayman GT4 manual. This is a 718 Cayman GT4 PDK, and it's got like 600 miles on the clock. It's pretty much delivery mileage. Stunning spec. And I only wish, I only wish my budget would stretch that far. But yes, considering we're talking about convertibles, this 718 Boxster ticks a lot of boxes. <laughs> see what I did there. So as you can see, plenty of convertible goodness. I haven't even mentioned the AMG GTC convertible over there, which is one of the highest spec I've ever seen. Beautiful, and the carbon ceramics and the brake calipers. Amazing car. But let's come back to this one, because I kind of said in the opening that there was something pretty special about this F-Type. Now, actually, although for me, the V8 F-Type has the noise and the drama, and if you've got the all-wheel drive version, maybe a little bit more everyday, uh, it's easier to live with. Arguably, the V6 F-Type is a better driver's car. It's slightly lighter on the nose. It's a little bit more dynamic. And when you, when you get the V6 in one of these singing, it, they make an incredible noise. But what makes this car so special is it's a manual. And there really weren't very many of these. We believe it's probably somewhere in the region of 5% of the V6 uh, F-Types that were made were manual. So they aren't a very common thing at all. And obviously never driven a manual F-Type, so <laughs> about time we did. <laughs> so this, this is a 2015 car and it could be yours for 36,495 and it's only got, well, just under 37,000 miles on the clock and a six-speed manual gearbox. Now, I have actually considered an F-Type convertible in the past as my car a number of times, and I've always kind of never taken the plunge. They do have one minor issue, and that is from a practicality point of view, the boot space in an F-Type convertible really isn't great at all. Even, you know, going away for a weekend with a couple of people and the necessary luggage would be a real challenge. However, they're a stunning, stunning thing to drive. So I'm very intrigued to see what this is gonna be like with a manual. Unfortunately, the weather isn't really perfect for soft top driving because it's wet and rainy and windy and horrible but let's get some cameras going and we'll take this for a drive and let's talk a little bit more about this premise that i kind of put out there is it a good time of year to buy a convertible it's probably not such a good time of year to drive one though Tell you what, even though this is the V6 only, it's still a bit slippy at the back. So this is probably the worst possible day I could think about to try and have a conversation with you about why you should buy a convertible. But hear me out, because I have a theory on this one. And that is, if you own a convertible and you're thinking you might want to move it on or get something else, as the winter approaches, you kind of come through the autumn and then it starts to have weather like this and it's cold and wet and horrible. You think, well, I'll tell you what, I'll sell it now. And you sell your car and you buy a tin top and happy days, right? But then you probably don't think about buying a convertible until the spring, you know, March, April time if you're in the UK and you can see the weather starting to get a bit better and the summer's approaching and you start having these romantic visions about having a drop top and driving with your sunglasses on in the sunshine. So you go and buy a car in maybe March or April time. But think about it, surely there's more deals to be done now. If you, if you want to buy a convertible and you can kind of stomach maybe you buy a convertible and you don't actually get to drive it with the roof down for a few months. Now's the time, right? Perfect. The question is, what do you buy? And well, for me, I've always loved the F-Type. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful looking car. So let's talk about this one and this manual gearbox. But in order to do that, let's go and find some decent roads. It's so great driving. 
driving an F-Type with three pedals. Although, it must be said, it's pretty horrible road conditions today. It's very, very wet. And these, although they are the baby brother of the F-Type range, they still got a lot of poke. So you do still have to treat it with a lot of care and respect. What I am loving is driving this car, pre-OPF car, it sounds fantastic. When you're brave enough to get it on song, you can just have a little blip of the throttle on the way down. It's a bit slippy today. So let's talk F-types. So the V8 F-type is an incredible car. And I know this sounds really daft, but I always prefer the aesthetics of four exhausts sticking out the back of the car than two that you get on the V6. But arguably the V6 is the thinking man's F-Type. In fact, actually, probably the two litre is the thinking man's F-Type. It's a cracking little car. But the V6 has an amazing engine tone, a great amount of performance, but it's just that little bit lighter, that little bit more nimble. And whenever I've driven F-Types in the past, and I'm lucky I've driven quite a few, they've all had the eight-speed ZF gearbox, which is a really nice, sweet, changing gearbox. Wow, it's not a job you want today, is it? Safe to pass, yeah. Um, and I'm just thinking this is, I think, probably the first... Oh, God, that sounds good. The first Jaguar I've driven that's got a manual box. And as I said in the earlier on in the video, it wasn't something that was specced a huge amount. They're quite a rare thing. In fact, the first time um, when I saw this car, I didn't even know they did the F-Type in a manual. I'd never seen one. So, you know, the, the, the novelty of having a manual box in an F-Type is something I quite like. In terms of driving, these cars are fantastic. I've not got the massive amount of leg room in this car and, and I've never actually driven a convertible F-Type before and I'm now starting to realise that well, it's probably a good reason, you know, thinking back in the past when I thought about buying one, probably wouldn't have been a very sensible car for me to buy personally. The coupe is loads of leg room, but this, I think over time, my seat bones are quite angled into the seat. I think I probably have quite a sore bum after a while. The rest of the car in terms of driving position, I've got the steering wheel nice and close to me and it's a lovely, lovely place to sit. It's a 2017 car, so clearly it's got 2017 infotainment system and let's face it, JLR didn't have the best infotainment system. The latest one is actually pretty good, but this, not so much. So I think you know, you'd know you have to learn to live with that. But everything else in here is great. These seats look great. Apart from the fact I could do with about five inches being cut off my legs. It's all right, eh? Wow. <laughs> this weather was not in my plans for today. Organising to shoot a film with a convertible car and it's like monsoon season. <laughs> I mean, it's wetter than an otter's pocket out there. And the runoff from the fields there's so much standing water, it's really quite sketchy. But I've got to say, I am loving this six-speed manual. It's a, it's a lovely gear change. Really nice clutch weight, lovely distance between the gates, a nice throw, and it really makes the car. I'm just gutted it's not a bit drier so I can push on a little bit. But I, I'm struggling to understand why, why more F-types weren't sold with a manual because it's lovely, like really, really lovely. And in the days where you struggle to get a performance car with a manual box, it makes such a nice change. <laughs> but let's go back the way we've come. Oh, look at that massive amount of stand. Oh my days. Oh, I want to go back and have a cup of tea. Here we go. But it really does give even more character to the car. It's just a shame I can't drop the roof and again an awful lot of wheel spin. There's a lot of standing water. I'm just gonna take it easy having driven down this road already. 
it is Aquaplane Central. So yeah, the, the thought of having an F-Type convertible, sadly, I think now I'm going to have to park that one for the long term because, as I've mentioned, there just isn't quite the legroom in this car for me to live with on a, a long term basis. I've got to say though, for the price, you're getting a lot of car. I mean, seriously? These things are beautiful, beautiful sounding cars. But I think if I was spending my money on a convertible, an everyday car that would tick all the boxes would be that that Boxster 718 Boxster S back in the showroom. You've got so much more practicality in that car. You've got a nice big boot up front. You've got some space in the back. That's a PDK, so you don't get the lovely manual change. You can get them in manual, obviously. So yes, today isn't the obvious day to think about buying a convertible, but one thing that's worth mentioning is a modern day convertible have multiple layers of canvas or, or soft top material that insulates the car. So even though it's freezing cold outside, with the aircon on, it's, it's no different in here in terms of temperature than it would be in a coupe. Wind noise and, and so on, again, they're, they're actually really good at high speed on a dual carriageway. I'm getting a little bit more noise today from the rain banging on the canvas on the outside, but not that much more. So you can actually live with these through the winter. You know, back in the day when you were looking at, I don't know, things like Triumphs, Spitfires and MGs, they were awful to drive during the winter because they were cold and they didn't have a glass window in the back. And you could buy a hard top version. I remember when I had my Honda S2000 that had a hard top that I put on during the winter, but you don't really need to do that with a modern day convertible because they're so good all year round. So if you are considering a convertible, don't think, oh, they're gonna be unusable during the winter because of the soft top. That's just not the case. I drive my Roadster all year round and it's fine. It's fine when it's cold and wet and frosty. Unfortunately, what I really wanted to do with this car is drop the roof so I could hear that V6 singing. And that ain't happening today, people. <laughs> Not in a million years. So in summary, manual F-Type, yes, please. Absolutely mega thing. I mean, you can do that for a start. I mean, I'd be doing that all day long and with the roof down, I bet it sounds amazing as well. And if you're brave enough to hit the loud pedal on a day like today, it's very, very rewarding. A cracking gearbox to drive. But I'd love to know which one of the convertibles that I've shown you today you plump for. I do love this car. I have to say though, just in terms of leg space and boot space, it's heavily compromised for me personally and my lifestyle, which unfortunately means it's not something I'd opt for. However, that 718 Boxster S, oh, 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 oh yes, I'd be all over that. If I could have that Cayman GT4, I'd quite like that too. Mind you, that Lamborghini's nice. <laughs> I think I need to head back to the guys at Anthony James, grab a coffee, warm up, and just have another look round the amazing cars they've got on display. I'll put their details in the description below if you want to head over to their website and have a look at more details. Massive thank you to Daniel and the team though at Anthony James. They, we talk a lot and message each other a lot and whenever there's something nice in stock, they're like, come on, come on over, have a drive. Um, and sadly the weather wasn't on my side today but I hope you've enjoyed it anyway if you have done so oh, listen to that give me a thumbs up comments below are always welcome and if you haven't done so already please subscribe to Petro Pet for plenty more content to come and I'll see you on the next video but you take care guys drive safe